Well, planning for your family's future is about more than just filling out some legal documents. It's about getting families the desired results that they deserve. That's the goal at Blazik and Greg. It is. And welcome back, Jim Blazik, to tell us a little bit more about that. Good to see you, Jim. Thanks for coming in. Welcome Good back. morning. Good Survived morning. Survived the, the severe weather last night. What was it like in your, your neighborhood? Just a lot of wind and uh, a lot of noise, but... Uh, no heavy rain yeah. and no trees down. Oh, good. Well, yeah, we'll no, see what yeah. happens today. <laughs> yeah, no, another round coming through. Uh, let's let's kind of get to business here because there's a couple things. Well, you do a number of things, but uh, let's start with uh, wills and revocable trusts. Mm -hmm. Can you break those, define those and, and tell us how you go about putting something like that together? You bet. Uh, as attorneys, all our law firm does is estate planning. We do a variety of plans, a lot of different planning strategies. But uh, most base planning for people, the entry level planning would be either a will or some sort of revocable trust. Those are two mm -hmm. different strategies and, and all planning should be based upon your goals, what you want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. You know, as we think about, you know, what we're here for and who we're here for, we start to have goals about transferring property to our loved ones. And the goals we have will dictate the right planning tools. So it's the estate planning attorney's job to, to help you develop your planning goals. How do you want to transfer property to your loved ones? What things do you want to protect against? Um, what type of outcome do you want to achieve? And the, the planning attorney can recommend the right tool to achieve that. A will, for example, is just a transfer document. It's a simple document, very basic. All it says is, when I die, that's who gets my property. Mm -hmm. When I die, that's the direction of the property. Mm -hmm. But there are typically no protective strategies in that simple will. The simple will is, I think, uh, I would call it the starter will that most married couples have when they have a, a, you know, a minor child and they do the will uh, to name a guardian for the child. That's the typical will client that I see. Newly married, modest estate, minor children, uh, very simple goals. But as people's goals, I guess as their estates increase, their mm -hmm. goals become more complex, they start to look at revocable living trusts, which are uh, a more sophisticated planning document, but offer so many more benefits. Uh, living trusts are designed to, first of all, avoid probate, so they minimize attorney's fees mm -hmm. in the back end when people pass away. But trusts are also drafted to protect assets. You know, what happens to my, to my children? You know, what happens to their inheritance when I die should my wife remarry? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, my property go the wrong direction. Right. So we show people how to, you know, make sure that property stays in the family or how do you protect the child's inheritance, you know, should they get a divorce later on? You know, trusts are designed to protect in those situations yeah, as it well. It really handles the what ifs. Mm -hmm. What if this happens? What if this happens? It covers all your bases. Exactly. So exactly. Can you have both? Do you need both, or is it a one or the other situation? Typically, the uh, you would have a will or a trust. Mm -hmm. You would not have both. Um, the revocable trust takes the place of your will as a distribution document. Um, it, is, it, it is just more complex, more sophisticated, but so much better mm -hmm. for more families. So it's our job to touch, talk to clients and see what their goals are and match the right tool with their particular goals. I'm gonna throw a curveball at you. Um, I've seen some people online uh, uh, talk about doing their will via video. They just take a video of themselves telling the camera where they want their house to go, where they want the money to go. Where, uh, is that a good strategy or do you need to get it on paper? Gee, I wonder what he's gonna say about this. <laughs> well, it's, it's always better to, to have it on paper. It's always better to have it on paper. Uh, it's so difficult to just say where things go yeah. and have that be an effective plan. Where trust really shine is that you retain assets in a trust and then they're protected. They're protected from a child's divorce. They're protected to give a direction when a child passes away. They can be protected from a child's creditors. Mm -hmm. They can be built to become springing special needs trust so that should the, should the beneficiary become disabled downstream, their trust share converts to a supplemental needs trust so it never disqualifies them from governmental assistance. So there's really, it's impossible to just give a short video yeah. and achieve all those protective strategies. Yeah, uh, I guess, you know, how often should you revisit some of these plans? Mm -hmm. Because I guess a will uh, or a trust, since it's so specific, maybe you need to revisit the trust a little bit more or is it the will? How, you have to revisit those at some point, right? You bet, we, we recommend that clients revisit their plan when their goals change. You know, as the seasons of our life change, our goals will change, the size of our states will change, and then it makes sense to revisit our plan, you know. Uh, it also makes sense to revisit your plan when the laws change, and your attorney should oh, be sure. telling you when the laws change. There's a massive law change in 2013, 
we send out thousands of letters to our clients to tell them what has changed and what can be improved. Mm -hmm. uh, planning after 2013 for married couples is dramatically different than it was before 2013. We're just kind of getting started on this conversation right now, but a great way where people can learn more information is some public workshops. When do you have those coming up and what can people expect from them? You bet. July 18th, 19th, and 20th, we have public workshops coming up. And those are uh, hour and a half workshops each where we review current planning strategies, planning options. We review the law that took place in, in 2013 and explain how today's planning is much better than yesterday's mm -hmm. planning. Well, the information is on the screen if you want to get involved with one of those workshops. We've had five minutes with you here. I imagine an hour and a half you delve a little deeper into some of these topics. Um, also, if you, uh, if you want to sit down with, a, with you, uh, the initial consultation, that's free, right? What can people expect with that initial consultation? You bet. Initial consultations are always free. We ask clients to invest about an hour, an hour and a half of their time to sit down and talk about their planning goals how they want to transfer property to, to their loved ones, what is important to them, um, and then they, they can decide to do a plan or not. But the consultation is free of charge. Well, and an important thing we all need to take care of. Yeah, yeah, think about it. Blazing Greg uh, has a website, blazinggreg.com. Thanks, Mr. Jim. Blazing, good to see you. Thanks so much. <laughs> all right, take care. Uh,